So, I was going through my YouTube channel and I realized that I haven't uploaded a science related video in a really long time. So, I figured it's about time I upload a science related video. So, here it is right now. What thrives on YouTube more than controversy? So, I figured that I could spread a message more if I pick a controversial topic because that will make people interested in a video as long as I present it in a good way and I hope I present this topic in a good way. So the controversial topic I'm going to be talking about is evolution, which has been a controversial topic for well, 100 years now. Scope's trial was about 80 years 80 years ago, I believe. So when you think of evolution, you probably think of this diagram. This shows a monkey on the left and most half of the picture and a fully upright man on the rightmost half of the picture. Now, some of you will probably think this is a model for evolution, human evolution at least. Others might disagree and say this is not a model for any sort of evolution. And if you believe this is not a model for any sort of evolution, you are completely correct. I won't be going in depth into evolution. I won't be going into its mechanics. I won't be going into much evidence for it. Because this is simply to clear up a question that I saw online. If you don't have a clear understanding of what evolution is and how it works, I would suggest go watch a simple video or read a short article. You don't need to understand much for this. All you need to understand is that species change throughout time. And it takes a very long time for a species to change into other species. So let's get to the question I need to answer. I saw this for forums and I did take the time to answer it. Word for word, the question is, does anyone really believe in the evolutional sequence of algae, fish, bird, mammal, human? Now I did answer this question on the forum and you can go to this question and you can search for my answer. It is down there somewhere and I go in depth into my answer on of this question and I, as always I'm not straightforward but in this video I will be presenting this as straightforward as possible. So there's some things that are wrong with this question and I'm not talking about the grammar. There's some things wrong with the way this question is formatted in terms of the science. So let's get started. This is an artist's representation of an era called the, not era, I should be more specific and say the period called the pre -camp Pre-Cambrian, Cambrian. This represents a time period called the Cambrian Explosion, which occurred around 600 million years ago. The Cambrian Explosion was not a physical explosion; it was a metaphorical explosion, an explosion of life. Life increased in diversity. You see this right here. You see strange species that you've never seen before. You probably don't even know what many of these are, with the exception of the sponges and the jellyfish. But just to point the arrow that is pointing left is of a creature called the Anamalocaris that is possibly the number one predator of the Cambrian seas and pointing downward is the trilobite which is one of the most diverse groups of animals to ever live. Now the reason I bring up the Cambrian explosion is because of the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. A prokaryotic cell, or any creature that is a prokaryote, has all prokaryotic cells, it has no nucleus. A eukaryote with eukaryotic cells has a nucleus. That's the least you need to know. All animals and all plants are eukaryotes. You have a nucleus, your dog has a nucleus, your mother-in-law has a nucleus, and bacteria, some protozoans, they have no nucleus. That is the most important thing. Eukaryotic cells came about pretty much they rose to power in the Cambrian period during the Cambrian explosion. So this is called a sea squirt. We're going to play a little game here. Do you think that this sea squirt is a vertebrate, meaning it has a backbone, or an invertebrate, meaning it has no backbone? If you guessed, it has no backbone, you would be completely correct. A sea squirt has no backbone, but it doesn't have a backbone. 
how about this little fella? This is called a lancelet. Does it have a backbone, making it a vertebrate? Or does it not have a backbone, making it an invertebrate? It is an invertebrate. It has no backbone. So, these two creatures are very special. They are invertebrates and not vertebrates. That's not what makes them special. They are called invertebrate chordates. What does this mean? Well, before you read the three bullets I wrote up there, you have to realize that the, f the classification of species is start with the first two, kingdom, we have animalia, we have um, plants, we have protozoans, we have fungi, and then we have kingdom. King no, we don't have kingdom, we have phylum, phyla. Phyla is the biggest classification you can have amongst animals or plants. And there's only one phylum for vertebrates, and it's not called vertebrata, it's called chordata. Chordates, as they're called, have a notochord. Notice how there is no specification for having a vertebrate or a backbone. All it needs to have is a notochord. And the notochord is that central highway of the nervous system that runs down the spine. So you don't need to have bones to be a chordate. Chordates have a notochord. That's that's it. If you if you have a notochord, which means you have that central highway of the nervous system going down your spine, you are a chordate. Invertebrates have no backbone. Not a notochord, no backbone. Your backbone, your spine, the vertebrae, you can feel them if you touch your back. If you do not have that, you are automatically an invertebrate. Now, invertebrate chordates is what you would classify sea squirts and lancelets under. They have no backbone, and they have a notochord, which means they are invertebrates and chordates at the same time. You would classify them, however, under invertebrate chordate. They are very special creatures. These are what you would call transitional species. They are living proof that there was a transition between non-chordate species and chordate species. That's where we get fish from. So now, let's play another game. Look at the skeleton of this creature here. Notice how I did not put up an artist's re representation, because if I did, that would be kind of biased. You would see what their skin looks like, and you would be able to guess my answer. Do you think that this creature, based solely upon this skeleton, is a mammalian or a reptilian? How about this creature right here, the skull in the corner? Or this creature in the corner? Well, these creatures are called mammal-like reptiles. Specifically, the creature in the middle is called moscops. The creature in the lower left-hand corner is called Dicynodon, and the creature in the upper right hand corner is called Scutosaurus. These creatures are mammal-like reptiles, which means that if you guessed reptile, you are correct. These are all reptilian. So why do you have to add mammal-like in front of their name? Well, the reason for this is these creatures were most likely warm-blooded and they could have had hair. That's kind of weird to hear, but mammal-like reptiles simply mean there are reptilians that are mammal-like. Mammals are warm-blooded. They are ectotherms. Not ectotherms, endotherms, I'm sorry. And they have hair and they give milk. That is all that they have to be. These creatures probably did not give milk, or at least if they did, we have no evidence for it. And they are warm-blooded most likely they are the these mammal like reptiles are the ancestors to both mammals and dinosaurs so that's just that just goes to show you that we do have transitional fossils from mammal and dinosaur these two creatures diverged from a similar group of so now what about this guy here? Is it a mammal or a reptile? 
This creature is called Thrinaxodon, and it is a mammal. Thrinaxodon was an example of a transitional fossil between mammal and reptile. These creatures were most likely warm-blooded, and they were faster than the average. They were faster than most reptiles could be because they were endothermic. They conserve body heat. They have a set body temperature, which allows them to use their energy. Thrinaxodon is the beginning of mammalia. So I basically answered this question, does that sequence make sense? First off, that sequence is completely incorrect. You do not start with algae, you do not start with anything in fact. Because the best way to understand evolution is not by sequence, but if you want to understand it in a chronological sense, you have to start from a single species, the very first species, and then branch your way out to other species. The reason for this is that, that's why I asked you if you had an understanding of evolution, evolution causes creatures to change throughout time. The more you change, the more, the more variety there will be. That's what causes all the diversity in the world of species. You can't say there's a sequence because there is no sequence. Every creature is equally on the last part of that sequence because they've all changed throughout time. This sequence is essential in understanding how evolution works. So, in conclusion, there's no sequence. You have to understand it as a web, a web in which creatures can branch out. And even better if it's three-dimensional because you can see how creatures evolve. And not just creatures, all living things. So that was a very, very, very non-professional, very simplistic rundown of evolution. I, I didn't go in-depth at all. I probably said a few wrong things in there. Um, I, I don't, I, I didn't, I'm not really professional with this, but I believe I did answer this question correctly. You can't understand evolution as a sequence. You have to understand it as a web. That is the whole point. So if you want a more in-depth understanding of evolution, you should be a real scientist and go do research on your own because that is the best way to learn. So find information on your own, and then check it with someone who you find reliable. So, the question is, where do we go from here? Well, you can begin by understanding the origins of life, because the origins of life is where evolution began. Life, the very first cells, are where we start evolution. Then, from those very first cells, we can begin to branch out into all the different species that we know of today. We can begin to create a true web of life. But we don't know where the origin of life is. We don't know what caused life to come about in the first place. What is my theory? Well, that's a question for another day. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future science videos, just leave a comment and I will do it. And as always, thanks for watching.